this site was originally designed by Cult. It is now made by Matek. It is their A2 style, and I use that liberally, rear flip up site for the AR-15. It is made out of all steel construction, and it only has though one small peep aperture. However, unlike most sites that are uh, flip ups or backup sites for the AR, this site also, besides just a windage adjustment, also has elevation adjustment, which is different than the regular A2 style. It is, it is not a knob under the site, it is a kind of a, a, a knob you to the side, the left side of the site. Now, this site does not lock in the upward position. It is only held open by spring tension. When folded, however, it is locked in the folded position. There is actually a detent in there which keeps it closed until you go ahead and you give it a bit of a flick and it pops open. Now, this site happens to be a, a, a overbuilt over-engineered site is a great site for the AR-15. There is only one issue I have with it. Um, when people go ahead and they have this site, uh, they tend to use it as a, not as a backup site, but as a standalone site. Now, what happens here is since this aperture is not hooded or protected, when used a lot, this uh, cantilever here, it kind of gets banged into things and and whacked and I've seen them bend, I've seen them break off. This aperture here, this whole post seems to be the weak link in this site because it is not protected. Uh, another thing that I don't like about it is if you're using it as a backup site, I kind of like my backup sites to be used only in the larger aperture site. Uh, I find that for a backup emergency site you don't really need to have a a fine um, you know, a, a, a fine, uh, you know, long-range peep site, I find that the, the larger aperture is much more useful as an emergency backup site. But also, since this site is made out of steel, it's also the largest of the sites. The heaviest, sorry. It is 3.372 ounces. Here is the Matek site, sitting behind the Neotech 552. Here it is open. This is the Leapers A2 style flip up rear sight. The lower body of this sight is made out of aluminum and the upper body is made out of steel. The apertures also are made out of steel. It has two apertures which are again like most of these uh, rear sights a larger style and a smaller style. Much like the standard A2 sight. The, lock, the locking mechanism on the sight is there seems to be a steel detent here which fits into this groove over here. So when it goes ahead and you know and you open you flip the sight up, it locks into position. However, it does not have any real positive lock. There's no button to push to go ahead and and lower the sight. All you do is you simply flick it down. It seems to work much like the detent in an AR-15 with a, uh, a spring a spring pressure detent. The reliabilities of this sight are um, quite extensive. Um, I've seen this site, uh, there's a certain state agency in New York, a certain uh, police agency, which bought a bunch of AR-15s to go ahead and uh, outfit their uh, patrol cars with. And they were kind of running low on funds, so they ordered 20 AR-15s, but they couldn't really afford any better sites, so they kind of they went with, uh, with these sites. And after about six months, Every single one of them came back with a problem. Every single one of them had failed some po at some point. The most common failure was there is a uh, uh, a roll pin here which holds this windage adjustment knob onto the uh, the uh, you know this cross cross screw here. And the the most common failure is this was uh, falling out and the whole aperture was coming apart. Second thing was that something was happening, I didn't really pull them apart because we just sent them back to the manufacturer but this, there was, seemed to be issues with this detent as well so overall this site was not a very reliable site it seemed to have a lot of problems, I'd only recommend it if you were just shooting at the range and you were using it sparingly
The weight is also kind of heavy at 3.46 ounces. Here is the Leaper sight behind an EOTech 552. This is the Command Arms A2 style rear flip up sight. This sight is made almost entirely out of polymer except for a couple of roll pins, a metal spring, a metal screw that holds the, rear, uh, the, the sight aperture in place, and an aluminum locking lug that attaches the sight to the Picatinny rail base. However, only one sight is aluminum and this side is polymer. Now this sight has two apertures. And it's here a smaller style aperture with a little notch cut out in it. I guess the intent was here if you're looking through uh, the smaller aperture and you have to engage a thread at a closer range, you could just kind of switch to this cut out V notch. And if you go ahead and you flip this around, you have a larger style uh, peep for 0 to 200 yards. One poor design feature here is that every time you flip this around, the sight actually moves, the apertures actually change, shift their windage, the point of impact. So if you go ahead and flip that once and flip it again, you can see I'm almost at the end from starting out in the middle. It's a very poor design. Another thing is the locking mechanism on this. In the up position, it holds on only by spring tension. However, on the inside here, there seems to be notches cut out for uh, when you push this crossbar which is also under spring tension, it, it, it disengages from the, the upper body, you know, the upper housing here, and it flips up, but it's very sloppy, very poor. It feels like there's a lot of play. It doesn't feel like it clicks into place really well. Now, reliability issues with this. This site has a major reliability issue. You see here, this locking shoulder sits here like this, this is the cross pin that sits through the Picatinny rail. Now this sits in, this screws, this is threaded, screws into this locking shoulder and kind of like it sits open like this. Now what happens is you're supposed to screw in another screw here through there and as you tighten it down it pulls it closer and tighter locking it onto the rail. Well when I first tried, the first time I put this thing on my rail, I don't know if you could see it here, but you see that right there? The screw head just snapped off while this was being put on. I didn't over torque it, I didn't apply too much pressure, it just snapped off. And unfortunately I happen to know this company and this particular screw or this particular screws using this weren't properly heat treated and they weren't hardened to a proper um, hardened, uh, a proper hardness. Here is the command arm sight sitting behind the Neotech 552 and you see here because of the failure of the, the stock screw I'm using here just a regular hex bolt. Now this sight you push in and it flips open and here it is. There is the small aperture. Here is the larger aperture. One thing I didn't mention before was that these apertures, when you flip them, they themselves are polymer. And they sit in this polymer groove here, this channel here, that they kind of just lock into by pressure. And I can only, matter, I can only imagine it's a matter of time till something there gives and either just wears away and it just kind of flops around easily or, or it just something just snaps. Also, this site weighs 1.11 ounces. In conclusion, out of these six different rear flip up sites, I can wholeheartedly say that the Leapers, the Command Arms, and the Midwest Industries are not worth it. If you're thinking about purchasing either the Leapers or the Command Arms, I would say don't bother. Spend an extra couple bucks, extra 10, 15 bucks, and get yourself the Mac flip up sites. They're much, much better quality and you'll be much happier in the long run. If you're thinking of purchasing the Midwest industry site, I would say go with the Yankee Hill Machine site. I believe it's a bit cheaper or go ahead and get yourself a Montec flip-up site for either 
the the same price or it might be even it might even be a bit cheaper nowadays now out of these three depends on what your focus is I would recommend different things if you want to go ahead and build a lightweight rifle I would definitely recommend the Magpul flip-up sight. You're not sacrificing much in getting this Magpul sight over, let's say, the Yankee Hill machine sight right here, or even if I had a A2 style. It's, you know, yeah, it's not as robust, but it's extremely durable. Um, it's very functional, and for a backup sight, this is exactly what you need. You don't need much. You just need something in case your optic fails, or um, in case you're out of batteries, or whatever it is. Now, if you're going to go ahead and say that, yeah, I need my sight to have uh, adjustments if you plan on shooting people for targets from uh, d different ranges, where known ranges where, where your optic has fail failed you and you're going to be shooting at things and you're going to be changing from 200 to 300 to 400 or up to 6 and back to 2, then you can go ahead and get this Matek rear flip-up sight. I do not see a real application that you would need such a thing. Also... Um, it does not have the large aperture, which is one thing I do miss from this. But at the same token, um, they are very nicely made. They're very well thought out. And sometimes they're going for as cheap as 50 60 bucks at gun shows. You know what? For that price, you're much better off getting that sight. It will serve you well, and it's actually, for, for the money you pay for it, it's very good.